Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Bodu. I work at the Department of Leukemia at MD Anderson Cancer Center. Today I'll be talking about characteristics and outcomes of older patients with secondary AML according to treatment approach. Our data was recently published in Cancer. So brief introduction into acute myeloid leukemia. It's characterized into two entities, which is de novo and secondary AML based on the presence or absence of a pre-leukemic history. Age, cytogenetics, and antecedent hematological disorder are well-established independent prognostic risk factors in outcomes in AML. It's also known that older patients, when we define older patients, they're uh, above 60 years of age. They achieve significantly lower remission rates and have a shorter disease-free survival when compared to their uh, younger counterparts. Further refinements in prognostication have identified a relatively favorable prognostic group among these patients and are characterized by younger age, which is 55 to 65 years, de novo AML, a favorable cytogenetic profile, and lack of multidrug resistant receptor expression. Patients who are aged between 60 to 75 years, having high disease features, but with minimal comorbidities and good performance status, represent a patient subset in whom there currently exists no standard recommended standard of care. And therefore, in an, in an effort to identify the most appropriate therapeutic strategy, we sought to review our own experience with various treatment approaches on these high-risk category patients. Developing newer investigation strategies to improve outcomes in this subgroup of patients is a critical unmet need. Also, establishing baseline metrics from which to evaluate these new investigation uh, strategies is important. For the purpose of this study, we'll, we did a retrospective chart review on older patients aged 60 to 75 years of age with newly diagnosed AML treated from 1990 to 2015. AML, uh, secondary AML, was defined by a history of prior MDS, MPN, CML, or aplastic anemia, or the diagnosis of therapy-related AML, or AML with karyotypic abnormalities characteristics of MDS. Patients were grouped into five cohorts based on their treatment regimens. First, high-dose or standard-dose cytopine-based regimen. Second, hypomethylating agent or hypomethylating agent combinations. Third, CPX. Fourth, low-dose cytopine combinations. Fifth, investigational agents. Patients' karyotypes were divided into four categories. That is adverse karyotype, diploid karyotype, intermediate karyotype, and unknown. It is important to know that we accorded a separate category to the diploid karyotype to establish a baseline comparison against which to compare other karyotypes. Our study endpoints included complete response, overall survival, and 8-week mortality rates. We evaluated a total of 931 patients meeting these criteria of age and disease characteristics. The baseline characteristics of patients are summarized in the table. As you can see, the median age was 68 years. Most of the patient characteristics were well balanced across the five treatment groups. Prognostically relevant between group in, uh, differences were observed with respect to age. Uh, as can be seen, uh, in group 1, there was a higher percentage of younger age patients. Additionally, 65% of patients in the CPX category had an antecedent hematological disorder compared to uh, only 20% and 15% in group 1 and group 2 respectively. The overall response rates for the entire group was 39.5%. On the univariate analysis, secondary AML status, prior treatment for antecedent hematological disorder, age, cytogenetics, and type of treatment had an impact on response rates. Patients who had prior treatment for antecedent hematological disorder had inferior uh, response rates when compared to those who did not get treatment for antecedent hematological disorder. In addition, adverse and intermediate risk predicted poor responses to therapy. Complete remission rates were lower in the hypomethylating agent and investigational groups compared to the um, high-intensity group. Eight-week mortality for the entire group was 20%. In group 1, it was 23%. With hypomethylating agents, it was low at 12%. And with low-dose cytorubin combinations, it was 19%. Coming to the overall survival, the median overall survival for the entire group about six months. We did not find a statistically significant difference in median survival when comparing individual groups. However, when we club together the low-intensity regimens, that is hypomethylating combinations and low-dose cytopine combinations, the patients in this composite group had a superior median overall survival when compared to those who were treated with intensive chemo regimens. Also of note, there was no difference in median survival in patients treated with CPX compared to low-dose intensity uh, approaches. Patients who received transplant, which was about 7% of the total study population, did much better when compared to those patients who did not go for transplant. Another curious finding was that patients who proceeded to transplant constituted only 4% of the intensive chemo group, whereas 10% of patients treated with low-intensity uh, combinations were able to proceed to transplant. And to analyze the reasons behind this disparity in proportions, we performed a landmark, an a landmark analysis that is from the time of complete response while censoring for transplant. 
although there was no significant difference in the overall survival the median survival was higher in the low intensity approaches at 12.8 months versus 10.2 months with high intensity approaches univariably the type of treatment age cytogenetics and prior treatment for uh, antecedent hematological disorder were associated with difference in overall survival on the multivariate cox regression age greater than 70 adverse karyotype and prior antecedent hematological disorder treatment were associated with significantly decreased overall survival so uh, now the question comes to what do we do for patients who are tre- who are between 60 to 75 years of age who have a, a good performance status and are able to tolerate intensive chemo our uh, study answers this question specifically in the sense that even though these patients may be able to tolerate intensive chemo they're probably better off receiving low intensity chemo approaches as we have seen patients who were treated with low intensive chemo had a uh, relatively higher overall survival low early mortality rates and were able, able to tolerate chemo better when compared to the patients treated with intensive chemo the results of our study reiterates to the fact that standard induction would not be the ideal option in these patients the results from our study should help reflect on the paradigm shift towards favoring low intensity uh, combination approaches even in patients who are expected to tolerate high intensity chemotherapy i think moving forward the rational combination of newer agents uh, with epigenetic therapies and liposomal agents may be the best step forward toward improving outcomes in these patients choosing the appropriate therapy must be made after due consideration to the applicability of reduced intensity uh, reduced intensity chemotherapy transplantation in the few select group of patients thank you